Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Morning, everybody. Welcome. Good to see people here. Um, today, we're doing a pit-led service. So if you don't know, the pits are a discipleship group here at the Olive Tree. And uh, today, we're putting into practice some of the things we talk about. And we are leading the service today. So it's gonna be, hopefully, it's going to be a good time. We're gonna <laughs> Everybody's been working really hard. So... Um, Kind of excited today. So, um, so you can find us online. We have we are on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, SoundCloud, and Instagram. And uh, make sure to visit the website olivetreemessianic.org. Um, you can find the Torah portion readings on there, and all kinds of cool stuffs on there. Announcements. So today. Our Torah portion outline is uh, Mishpatim, which means ordinance. It's ordinances. It's number 18. So we're going to have some pit members come up here to do. Josh is here in a little bit. Uh, go ahead and get out your Bibles and your uh, sidors if you have them, because um, we're about to get started with the liturgy here in a second. We'll go ahead and get started with the, the Matavu. Matavu haleha Yaakov, Mishkeno teka Israel, Vanim berachas decha, Avu veteka, Eshtaka vel heko, el heko kacheka, Bairateka. Adonai ahavti meon beiteka, umakon mishkon kevodeka. Vani eshtakave vehekro, evrecha, evrecha, livne Adonai osi. Vani tefala tilecha Adonai ratzon Elohim rochas decha aini bemet yesheka. And now in English, how lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. O oh Lord, through your abundant kindness, I will enter your house. And in awe, I will bow down toward your holy sanctuary. O oh Lord, I love the house where you dwell and the place where your glory resides. I shall prostrate myself and bow, bend the knee before the Lord my maker. As for me, may my prayers to you, O oh Lord, be at the right time. O oh God, in your abundant righteousness, Answer me with the truth of your salvation. Amen. If everyone would please rise. As we say the Shema, we face this way, towards the east. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echa. Baruch Shem Kevod Malkuto Le'olam Va'ed. O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Blessed is the name of His glorious kingdom for all eternity. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Eloheka. Bakol lavaka, uvakol navshaka, uvakol meodeka. Vahayu haravarim haele, asher anokim mitzkavka hayom alavaveka. Vishinam tam levaneka, vidibarta bam bashivtika beveteka. Uvlektika vaderek, ushaf baka ukumega. Ukshar tam leot aliadeka, vahayu latotefot bain eneka. Uktav tam alamuzod beteka uvish areka. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, 
and with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you retire, and when you arise. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hands and let them be frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I'll vote. Barugata Adonai Eloheinu Elohe Avoteinu Elohe Avraham Elohe Yitzchak Elohe Yaakov Ha'el Hagato Hakipor Vahanara El Elyon Gomer Chasadim Tovim Vigone Hako Mizacher has de avo, who may be well of Nave and Nahem, Laman Shamo, Beava Melek Ozer Umashio Kumagain, Barugata Adonai, Magain Avraham. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob the great, mighty, and awesome God, the most high God, who bestows grace and creates all and remembers the righteousness of the fathers and brings a redeemer to their children's children for his name's sake with love. O King, helper, savior, and shield, blessed are you, O Lord, shield of Abraham. Amen. All right, now we're going to say the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. I always like the part in the Our Father where he talks about us asking for daily bread because I, I, it's a reminder to me that he will fulfill our needs. And it may not be everything that we want, <laughs> but it will be what we need. All right. So now we're going to be entering into the Torah service. If I can get Jonathan and Landon up here, we're going to be our uh, ARC attendant and Torah carrier today. I'm going to say the Ain Kamoka. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, and there is nothing like your works. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion is throughout all generations. The Lord reigns, the Lord has reigned, and the Lord will reign forever and ever. The Lord will give strength unto his people, and the Lord will bless his people with peace. Kemoka, the Elohim Adonai, the Enkima Seka, Malkutika Malku Kolamim, Umem Shatika, Bakodor Vador, Adonai Melek, Adonai Mala, Adonai. Shalai, Tivne Homo, 
about Yerushalayim. Ki verka lava batak nu melek el ramanisa adon Father of mercies, do good in thy will to Zion. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, for in you alone do we trust. O King, God exalted and lifted up, Master of the universe. Amen. When the ark would travel, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and let them that hate you flee from you. For from Zion will go forth the Torah and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed be he who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people Israel. Vayahiven so haron vayomer Moshe Kumo Adonai Biafutsu Veka Mianusu Misanecha Mipanecha Kimetzion Tetze May be seated. I'd like to call up our uh, Torah readers today, or Torah reader today. First, we're going to say the blessing. Ha <laughs> ha. Baruch Adonai Hamburak Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam 
אשר פקרת לנו מכהמין, ונתן לנו את תורתו, ברוג אתה אדוני, נותן התורה. אמן. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One, for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. All right, today's Torah portion is number 18, Mishpatim, Ordinances. Ve'ele ha-mishpatim asher tasim lifnehem ki tigne eved ivri sheishanim ya'avod uvashvi'i yetze lahashi hinam im begapo yavo begapo yetze im ba'al isha hu ve'yatza ishto imo. And these are the judgments which you shall set before them. If you buy a Hebrew servant, six years sh he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he was married, then his wife shall go out with him. In this portion, we observe laws regarding slavery, restitution, death penalty offenses, treatment of the vulnerable, money lending, things that belong to God, those who pervert justice, returning lost items, Sabbath, and the festivals, in addition, God details the conquest of Canaan and confirms his covenant with the nation of Israel. This portion's title is Mishpatim, or Ordinances. An ordinance is an authoritative order, a decree. So is this portion just a bunch of random laws? How do they apply to us? An authority usually implements laws to protect people from something bad or harmful. Does a parent instruct a child, don't play in the street, just to keep them from fun or to oppress them? No, the instruction protects the child's life. Laws also encourage and command people to behave in a good and beneficial way. For instance, a parent instructs a child to share a toy because it's the right thing to do. The child who shares benefits by building good character. The child who receives benefits materially. Just as a parent instructs a child to protect him, so also God gives us laws to protect us. This protection is twofold. It discourages the potential offender from committing sin by punishing the guilty, and it protects those and it protects the victim from being taken advantage of by providing restitution. It also protects those who truly seek God and desire to be righteous like him by helping them to distinguish right from wrong. These laws encourage people to behave in a righteous manner because God has commanded obedience, and we obey to demonstrate our love for God. We live in a fallen and unjust world, but God's laws help restore justice even amidst the sin. They protect us from evil, though they do not bring an end to evil. God's laws make a way for both justice and restitution to be done. God gave us his festivals and Sabbaths to restore our physical bodies through rest from labor, as well as to restore our spirits by focusing our hearts and minds on God and his plan of redemption. He gives us his festivals and Sabbaths not just for our benefit, but also for the benefit of the livestock and the land. God wants us to take care of the things he has given to us. He cares about our well-being, provides for us, and gives us rest, and we are to do the same for those who depend on us. This portion displays a glimpse of God's character, that of the just king who restores order in the midst of this broken world. He leads us in paths of righteousness by defining right from wrong and helping us to walk in the right way. He restores stolen property to its rightful owner, he reestablishes his covenant with Israel, which shows that he is faithful and unchanging. In conclusion, these laws were not to oppress Israel or to keep them from good things. Rather, they are given to show Israel that God is just and his people must also be just, that God defends the vulnerable, protecting those who cannot protect themselves, that God separates between right and wrong and that we should walk in righteousness, that God wants our obedience because obedience protects us from harm, and that though we live in a sinful world, God is restoring the world and will one day restore all things to perfection.
Everyone will please rise. Vezot ha Torah, Asher Samoshe, Lifne Bene Israel, Apiadonai, Biad Moshe. This is the Torah that Moses placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moses' hand. I can call up our Haftorah reader. Testing. There we go. Jeremiah 33, verses 25 through 26. Thus says Adonai, if I have not made my covenant of day and night firm, and the fixed patterns ordering the heavens and the earth, only then would I reject the offspring of Jacob and of my servant David, so that I would not take from, from, him, from him his, from his offspring rulers over the offspring of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will restore them from their exile and have compassion on them. all know God gives us rules to follow. Some people do their best to follow, but they stumble along the way. Others don't listen to rules and ordinances at all and fall away from the Lord. It's human nature to be sinful after all, but that doesn't mean we need to accept that path and not follow rules at all. Matter of fact, sometimes we break rules and God can use those circumstances for good and for praise, or the disasters can be enough to send us running back begging for forgiveness. But that doesn't mean we need to be sinful just to see what kind of wisdom and lessons we might learn. In today's reading of Exodus, we saw how loving and gracious God is for giving us his commandments, while in Jeremiah 34, we see how sinful and manipulative man can be. First, they, first the slave owners enslave people to do their dirty work. Then, when God says to free the slaves because the seven years are up, did they listen? Yes and no. Once the slaves were freed, the owners turned right around and enslaved them again because it's too hard to let go of something we are so used to, something we're so used to having around all the time. So what is going to happen now? They, there clearly has to be some change in the way the slaves' owners are acting. See, God wants the attention on him. He wants to be praised and loved just like how he shows us love, even when we don't deserve it. But if the slave owners held back their slaves, the slaves would not have known what better path awaits them, and their owners would not have known what it means to be showing love to others. In conclusion, if we don't follow God's rules and put our focus on Him, we are missing out on the opportunity to let our love for Him shine. If we don't let go of whatever God is asking us to release, then how will we grow closer to the Lord if we are being held back? Yeshua made a sacrifice for us to show just how much He cares about each and every one of us. And if we can't change and sacrifice something in our lives to show how much we love him, what message is that sending to others? Amen. All right. 
Now we'll have our Brit Hadashah reading. Right. So this is uh, Romans six sixteen to 18. Do you know that to whatever you yield yourselves as slaves for obedience, you are slaves to what you obey, whether to sin resulting in death or to obedience resulting in righteousness? But thanks be to God that though you were slaves of sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching under which you were placed. And after you were set free from sin, you became enslaved to righteousness. So, okay. What this is talking about, it's talking about us being slaves to righteousness, and I'm, I'm sure pretty much everyone here, you, you know, you've heard of that. And, you know, it, it makes a sense, you know, you, you've got to serve God, but we don't really like that term, slave. I mean, you've got uh, some translations, they'll have bond servant, and that sounds a bit better, but servant, you're thinking of a butler, and no one wants to really be a butler, except maybe butlers, but even then, you're sure they have some ambition, like, I don't know, politics or something. But no one really likes to serve. That stinks. You don't want to be on the bottom, you want to be on the top. And, and like, things like this, it's better if you just go back to the beginning and try to figure it out. And at the beginning, it's not the beginning of Romans, it's not the beginning of New Testament. We've got to go all the way back to the beginning. So we're going back to Genesis. And at Genesis, we had the garden. And okay, that, that was pretty good. It was paradise. I mean, of course it was pretty good. But in the garden, everything was good. God said it was good. But he said that, oh, by the way, there's this tree. Don't eat from the tree. And so if you're reading this and you're thinking, okay, uh, you know, the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil, that's, that's probably a bad thing if God doesn't want you to eat from it. So don't eat from it. That's good. If you do, that's bad. And, but wait a second now. Now how could, some people have brought up like, oh, how could God have created this evil tree if God is good? And then they, they dismiss the whole thing. But and, and that's, that's interesting because you're like, well, kind of makes sense for a second because, you know, if there was no tree, there couldn't have been a fall because Satan couldn't have tempted Adam and Eve and they wouldn't have eaten from the fruit and there would have been no fall and everything would be perfect and we'd still be growing grapes somewhere. But it's, it's not. This world, frankly, is in pretty rough shape. And but, so how could God, absolute perfection, cause something bad? That doesn't make any sense. But, but it's, it's ignoring what the tree actually was. The tree wasn't bad. What the tree was, was a symbol of choice. Because if God had created humans and then forced them to do everything that he told them to do, well, then they're not really loving creations. They're not uh, uh, representatives of God. They're not images of God. A God isn't some uh, uh, chained robot doing whatever he does. No, he has choice, and he gave us choice. But he couldn't have not given us choice, because otherwise we would have just been those robots just doing what he told us. That's not, and if we did choose to love God, that's not really love. It would have been just whatever we are programmed to do. So God gave us, he gave us a choice. And he said, you know, eat the tree, or eat from the tree, or don't. Follow what I'm telling you to do. And we ate from the tree. And what that really means is that we were saying, we don't need you. We don't want to follow you. We, we want to do, we want to do things our way. We want to follow us. We want to be our own masters, and we want to only serve us. And that's where everything goes wrong, because that's not what's, how it's supposed to work. That's not how things are supposed to happen. We're supposed to serve God. God is the 
ultimate good of anything that could ever possibly be. He is the definition of existence and goodness itself. You've got to serve him before anything else. Because if you're serving yourself, you're just... That, 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 that's idolatry. That's the, that's the very definition of idolatry is putting anything above God because God is above everything. And so, you know, the ability to choose, that was the good thing. But actually choosing the wrong thing, that's, that's the bad thing. And the great thing, the, the reason why it's so important that we are slaves to righteousness is that we have to throw away in a way, we have to throw away that choice that God gives us. God gives us the choice. You can go down the wrong path. You can go down that way. That, that's your option. But what we have to do is throw that aside. We have to choose God instead. We have to give up any kind of autonomy we have and surrender completely to God. Because, because I mean, you've got two options. You can either serve yourself or as uh, Paul says later in Romans, be a slave to sin or to missing the mark. And missing the mark, that's just following yourself. That's doing what you want to do. Because anything that you want to do, that you choose, well, your path is, well, it's not God's path. If you choose your own path, you choose your own destiny, that's not God's path. That's not God's way. That's not the way that God wants you to go. That is not the right way, the good way. So we've got to give up any kind of mastery over ourselves, we have any kind of control over ourselves. You, you know, when the, when the, uh, the, the slaves, and the, we, were, we were talking about in Exodus and in Jeremiah, they couldn't be serving one master and then doing a part-time bit with another guy. No, they were just that guy's slave, or they were that other guy's slave, or if they were set free, they were their own. But we can't be our own because we're not God. We're not supposed to be our own master because we are designed to be servants. Well, I mean, what was our, our job from the very beginning? We were supposed to be gardeners. We were there putting the garden to cultivate and to expand that order and beauty and, and goodness to, to everywhere. That, that was our job. We were the image bearers of God. And, and now, you know, we, we chose way back then our own path. And honestly, every day we're taking fruit from the tree. We're choosing our own path. And we're saying, no, 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 no. no I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I know what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to go down my path my way and we gotta let that go it's and it's not easy it's it's not even like like you want to but once you get to that moment when you do have to let it go you're like eh, i'm just i'm just going to turn my brain off i'm not going to think about it it's fine everything's fine it's okay and then you look back and you're like oh yeah i messed up oh well and then you just move on but, but we can't can't keep doing that and it's Sometimes it's not completely, or sometimes it is just a conscious thing, a conscious just rejection of God. Other times, you know, it's, it's more just what we've been doing the whole time, so why change now? And we just, we just don't think about it. But we got to start thinking about it. We have to start saying this, whatever it is, is wrong, and we've got to let it go. We've got to, and we've got to follow God. We've got to do what he wants and follow his way because his way is it's the best way and it's the only way that we can go thank you so much to our readers for sharing with us what god showed them that was pretty awesome Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher natan lanu Torah demet Vakaye olam natapitu kenu Baruch atah Adonai Notein haTorah Amen Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, 
who has given us a Torah of truth and has planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Let's come here, let me be there, and be there, Shalom, Hashivenu Adonai, Elecha Venashuva, Hadesh, Hadesh Yamenu, Hadesh Yamenu. Those who take hold of it and those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness and all its paths are peace. Bring us back, Lord, to you and we shall come. Renew our days as of old. Amen. All right, thank you. All right, now we're going to take a pause in the the um, live stream when we get ready for uh, our message. Uh, be sure to stick around for that because uh, we've got two of our members that uh, went to went to Haiti and they're going to tell us all about it, and it's going to be great. So be sure to come back.